What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Mike and uh, we're just sitting in the car recapping another, I would say, successful session of flute outings uh, that we've had in the last week. Um, summer flounder fishing is uh, it's something that comes around every year for three months. Uh, so people certainly like to make the most of that time when they're available to fish for them. Uh, I'm, I'm one of them particularly. I, I really enjoy fluking. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time, you know, ever since my father took me out. And, um, you know, a, lot, a lot's changed since uh, I last went out with them. You know, we, we were going back to uh, spearing and uh, squid presentations with bait, dragging it, and hoping something bites. And uh, now here we are 20, 30 years later, and I'm throwing jig heads with uh, gulp imitations to try to get them to, get them to bite. It's crazy how that works. Um, but anyway, um, so looks like a lot of the forage that's that they're feeding on right now in some of the areas that we hit, they uh, spearing and rainfish. Um, rainfish are actually kind of cool. They they just basically look like raindrops on top of the water. Um, one of the, one of the videos you're actually going to see some of that uh, while I'm fishing. Um, but you know, to imitate that, uh, we ended up buying these uh, Gulf sand eels. They're like five inch baits. Uh, they go they slide right on the jig head. And I'm um, basically just using the same uh, swing method and, you know, wherever I'm at to let the bait flutter and attract a, uh, a, a you know, basically attract something that's hungry and wants to eat it. Uh, so it looked out pretty good. We, uh, you know, some days are good, some days a little slower than usual, you know, than we would like, but um, that's fishing. You can't do anything about it. Um, and I'm also going to just cover off some of the other variables that come into play with some of that stuff uh, as far as... Uh, you know, water temperature, you know, winds, uh, tides, uh, all that played a fact, I, I believe, in whether or not we were catching or not. Um, anyway, so without, without further ado, um, here's all the clips from what we did, and uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Gonna try a little bit of a different twist here. I did really good on these gulp sand eels at the jetty not too long ago. So what I usually do with these jig heads, uh, the way that they're lined up, you can put them on straight or you can bite off a little inch off the top of it. And that allows it to slide on and make a very, very Good looking presentation. And it's key to like thread it on and make it look natural. I mean, that's the whole idea. You know, you're, you're trying to imitate a bait fish. So the more natural it looks, the more enticing a fish will be. You know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So three eighths, a little lighter. Gonna let it fly. See what happens. too is um if you're if you're fishing and you don't feel any bites or anything like that's really happening off the, in the location you're at it's smooth you got a whole beach to work with especially if you're here early in the morning nobody here that's going to be really getting in your way to bother you it's kind of the beauty of doing this all right so we move I know where my stuff is, so it's all right. Oh, I think this is a bluefish. That's always a fun start. He's not a big one. Gosh, I heard there's some mackerel here too. Right. You never know. I think this is a blue the way it's just fighting now. This thing. Yeah. Oh, the lowly bluefish. Kind of bigger than most, though. That's cool. 
but we don't want him. We don't want him. Still cool. Still cool. Mm. Bang it up too much. Usually they got a soft plastic. You gotta watch with these fish because they they just go to town on stuff and. Like I said, you just gotta keep walking. It's a little guy though. He ain't that big. My top throw off. Oh no, never mind. There it is. This ravaged sand eel gold is still catching boots. I haven't caught more than one fish in the same spot. It's been a matter of moving. Moving, just flicking the jig up and down off the bottom. Same thing at the uh, jetty. Let it hit bottom, pop it a few times, let it flutter, hit bottom, and repeat. Right, so a few things to take away from uh, the last couple fish that I caught. Um, you know, again, first off, we're, we're targeting fluke, um, or another term for them is known as summer flounder. Um, and they're bottom feeding fish, so they literally will lay on the bottom, flat on the bottom, um, and they'll ambush pretty much any sort of like bait or prey that like floats and, you know, swims in front of them and everything like that. Um, so maintaining a light jig helps to give a little more like a realistic presentation when you're fishing these baits uh, which triggers them to strike on them um, given given the ladder here with that you know we're just you know I, w I maybe walk about half a mile a mile of beach this day and it was pretty much the three fish you caught and maybe one extra bite along top of that it was very very slow um, but that's kind of the name of the game with some with this sometimes if you're not finding fish in one spot just move try try another spot and see if you have any luck you know you know there's so much beach to work you know it can't hurt to try but um this is like i said this was a really slow day and you know those fluke hit pretty mid cast like I, if anything you know there, there's so many other areas they can hit too like you know get that area where the waves breaching and it's called the beach lip and they'll usually hit in there too um so they they could literally hit anywhere you just have to basically get your lure out in front of them and you know hope they're hungry <laughs> just the way it works sometimes so given that we had a really slow day here we're gonna just uh you know move on to the next day and uh you'll see it had quite a 
different outcome. All right, so this is a new day, new location. Gonna give it a different try. Uh, same approach though, gulp sand eels. Um, been seeing a lot of like rain bait and turns and everything like that. So just like at the beach, we're gonna pop one of these bad boys on and uh, give it a shot, see what happens. Uh, there we go. That is our presentation for this morning. Let's we'll see how this works. Wait out as far as possible. It's not very deep here. Maybe about three feet, four feet. And the channel way out is about seven or eight feet. And just a few jigs off the bottom, let it let it flutter, let it float. Wait till it hits bottom, line should slack up, and then boom. That's it. Same thing at the beach. Let's see what happens. There we go, there's a, there's a fluker. Not very big, but it's a fluke. So I'm cool with that. First participant today. Not a bad one. I mean, bigger than I thought, honestly. Okay, thanks for the shower, appreciate it. All right. Uh, it's close, not a keeper, but that's a good start. About 17-ish. All right. Bid. 15 minutes we got two fish better than the beach the other morning you know sometimes that's what it is too wrong place um, but you know sometimes too you know when you scout and you learn spots you gotta sometimes if it's a confidence thing you just gotta wait it out Front of you. I like that. Thank you. One could say I'm drawing them right into me. <laughs> They're hitting right at my feet now. It's funny. Let's see. Right on my feet. 
This one actually feels... Took my bait. That was very rude. Not cool, man. But yeah, we're still at that 17 ish mark. So it is what it is. Alright. Silly fish took my bait. So I had to re equip myself. That's okay. They're in here. This may actually be, this may be video material after all, you never know. <laughs> I feel like every time I go fluke fishing, it's always, uh, either get like a crazy mixed bag or, uh, just don't really do a whole lot like at the beach the other morning. But I mean, you can't get, you're never going to know if you don't try, you know? So far we're doing pretty good this morning. I'm, I'm cool with catching some small fish. Uh, hoping to get a little bigger though than that though. We're hitting 17 a couple times. Hopefully. We'll see. But you know. Last two fish just kind of hit real close. You know, it wasn't like, didn't have to. So then you may be asking, so why aren't I casting really up close? Well, I like to cover ground when I'm like retrieving, you know. They can be carpeted all over the place. You're never going to know, you know, more ground you cover, I think the more your chances are to catch. But I mean, that, that logic can work against you too, because sometimes you feel like you're just wasting your time. Eh, teach your own. You got to just do it to see what happens. Yeah, so I'll, I'll pump a few times and then I'll stop just to make sure I'm floating back near bottom. You know, again, you know, these fish are hanging on bottom waiting to eat. So you can get it anywhere from like, you know, a foot off the, anywhere from half a foot to a foot off the bottom and just kind of bounce it in the strike zone. Something will hit it. But it's not very deep water either. So I, I always, I mean, I've thrown a high low in here. And I've always thought that single jigs have worked a little better you know just you know less area to work you know easier to keep one bait in the strike zone rather than two baits also less to snag on if you got a little bit of a rockier bottom but you know quarter to three eighth ounce in this part area of water it's always worked pretty good for me and i've got heavier leader on and the reason i got heavier leader on is like i use this i use i use all my rods for a lot of different stuff um you know, if I had the convenience and I had more, like, rods, I can, you know, just kind of rig them up specifically the way I want to. But, I don't know. I think, just think it's easier to have, like, a specific leader on and just put, a like, a TA clip or a swivel or some snap swivel. And then that way you can just kind of, like, make it, you know, fish at your leisure. You can fish for different varieties of fish. You don't have to keep changing things up. I'm sure people can fish an eighth an ounce in here if they had light enough leader. I just, I just like having convenience of going for other fish. That's a little one. Surprised he's not water skiing up here yet. Where's he at? Hey, there you are. See, little guy. He ain't big. We're hoping your mother pops up soon to have some fun. But you're fun too. So they're all still like further up here, it seems like. push it in with the inlet. Makes sense. They'll probably have resident fish that are hanging out in here. And 
now all the other fish that are pushing in from the inlet. And a lot of guys, uh, they'll kayak. A lot of people will kayak this channel too, you know, the, all, where all these boats are floating in from. I mean, it's a great, it's a great area. Any really area that you got a channel marker in the bottom, what do we got here? Oh. I don't think he's gonna keep it. Again, you know, we're getting a lot of these 17 inch fluke. Yeah. So most of the time these fish are lip hooked. But you'll get the ones every so often that really want to eat this thing and just have a pair of pliers. Makes life a little easier. Later, dude. Well, another thing with these gulp sand eels is uh, they get used and abused and they're not very tough. So you get a fish like that, it gets it down its guzzle. It's more often or not going to lead to the point where you got to probably just re equip your, uh, your jig head with something. They're just not very tough baits, unfortunately. So as well as I'm pounding these fluke, you got to make sure you have a very high quality quantity of these lures. Otherwise, you know, they don't last very long, unfortunately, which is a shame because they're such great baits. Yeah, that is definitely one thing I would love to improve about them, increase some of their durability so that they last longer. And the other, the other variable that we haven't even touched on yet is uh, if you notice at the beginning when I listed the uh, the specs for the day, uh, the temperature of the water was only around like 70 degrees at slack low. Um, we had a south blow over the overnight and um, brought in some cold water. And as soon as this incoming water started coming in, it got real chilly real quick. So, you know, despite my best efforts to, you know, keep casting around and see if we could find something, it just never ended up having any other fish. This is it. D-Day. Today I show these fruit what's up. all about tides in here. I mean, I've uh, I've seen the beginning of like I've seen like ice slack and outgoing be a more favorable tide. And I'm not sure if that's just for this jetty or if it's just for all jetties, but. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Wow, man. <laughs> Two for two, I'm almost limited. <laughs> so yeah, how about that? Two casts and we get two keeper fluke. Um, you can poke the joker that it may have been the same fish pulled in twice. Uh, it wouldn't put it past me. I didn't check enough into seeing whether that was true or not. Um, but unfortunately, as great as things started out, it really never amounted to anything. It just, you know, we had a couple other small fluke come up and uh, one blue fish and that's, pretty much it. Uh, other than that, it was a quiet bite. Uh, but, you know, we got on some fish, uh, tried moving around on the rocks as well, and uh, just really didn't yield anything. So, it is what it is. That's why they call fishing. Um, but if you did end up watching all of this, well, thanks. I uh, hope you were able to learn something from it. And uh, as always, tight lines and sort of on, my friends. Till next time.